Hey, folks, and welcome to another edition of City Hall Live. I am Joe Abeta, and today our guest is Christine Chavez, the Water Conservation Manager. Is that correct, Christine? That's correct. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. <laughs> we just we just talked about it. I, I kind of got, yeah, I was looking at the camera and whatnot, but but thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Um, Christine, I know, uh, you know, we've had you on before, but you're, you're on specifically now to talk about uh, Fix a Leak Week coming up March 15th through the 21st. What is Fix a Leak, a Leak Week? Well, Fix a Leak Week is part of a national um, sort of water conservation event that we have every year. Um, it's sponsored by the Alliance for Water Efficiency. We have a lot of different participating organizations and we all try to focus on leaks for the month of March. And so, um, we always try to, to link up to that campaign because it's always such an important focus for us here in the city of Santa Fe. Yeah, it's uh, it's something, it's just to remind us, right, to check our our, our faucets, our shower, our shower heads, uh, water uh, outside, maybe your spigots, whatever, your running toilets, right? Because the, the silent waster, as they call it, right? Right, right, Joey, all of that. Um, the reason why it's, it's scheduled for the month of March is because normally that's when people start to turn on their irrigation systems. Okay. And then that's when we really start to see leaks appear, especially now using um, the Ion Water app and you know all of our new Badger meters, we're able to see those things in real time. So it's a, a great opportunity to, for us to focus on those things as they mostly occur related to irrigation leaks in March. Gotcha. Okay, so you had mentioned, you mentioned the, uh, the uh, Ion app, right? And that is the app. Now that's the app that people can go on city of Santa Fe water customers can go on and look to see what their usage is. Correct. Yes. The ion water app is a huge tool for us in water conservation with our customers. Um, it's a free app for all of our city residents and it's really easy to sign up, but we can help you do that. Um, but what this gives you the ability to do is to see your usage in um, real time. So it's if you want to change any behaviors in your home, if you want to try to see how much water you're actually using to irrigate your garden and you're trying to look at that amount of water, you can adjust that using the app. But you can set a threshold also so that you're alerted if any type of um, unusual usage occurs at your home. So in that case, if you have a second home, you know, some people for our second homeowners in Santa Fe, they can use the app to identify problems while they're away from their properties. Um, but even for all of us, I mean, if we've got a leak, like Joey was saying, and it, you know, especially like in the toilets, you can't always hear that this mm -hmm. app would notify you immediately that there's something happening. So, um, it's the best thing we could ask for when it comes to looking at leaks, finding leaks and, you know, being notified of them before they cause a really big issue. Yeah, that's pretty cool because it, it's something that we offer our customers from the city of Santa Fe and it's cutting edge, you know, and it's, it gives you access to, your water uh, consumption that you could see. So like, let's say it's two in the morning and you happen to wake up because the dog needs to be let out. You let him out and you look, you just happen to look at the app and you say, wow, we're using a lot of water and everyone's asleep and we're not running anything. Something must be up, right? That's like, that's the purpose of it, correct? That's part yes. of the purpose of it, yeah. That's no, that's a perfect example of how the app should be used and, and can be used. and. Um, you know, the, the city right now is undergoing um, an upgrade to that technology. And so our ability to see things in a real time, um, in a real time way will improve once we need these upgrades take place. So, um, you know, it's, it's a really advanced system and we're so fortunate to all have access to that kind of data. And um, it just helps us all looking at water that's being wasted and leaks for us is like, if the easiest thing for us to try to fix because many people don't know about it. And um, you know, the app helps them identify those leaks and um, we can offer resources to our customers to try to help them address and fix them. And so, yeah. um, you know, any of those issues, you know, that that's what really what we're focusing on in the month of March. So for the month of, month of March, it's kind of a reflection, right? On, an, uh, on assessing, being aware of leaks, what are some, what are your top three leaks that people can look for, even top two, but I know there, there's probably an easy three that you can probably just right now just list, but what would you say people, the easiest ways people can look for leaks in their homes? So that's a really great question, Joey, and I'm glad you're giving me the chance to talk about it because we do offer a lot of resources to help people find leaks in their home. 
Mm. If you're looking for things indoors, you know, that's the first place to start. So you want to check your toilets and we do give free dye tablets so that you can check all your toilets to make sure that they aren't leaking and we can help you with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, really toilets are, are one of our biggest, um, you know, we always are able to identify that they're a top leaker. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the biggest issue in March really occurs outdoors. And so it's those freezes that sometimes we don't anticipate, you know, with outdoor spigots that cause leaks. Um, and then also, pipes underground, you know, with irrigation, um, irrigation, irrigation lines. Because what happens is sometimes we don't winterize um, our systems properly. And so water remains in the system and it expands and causes the, the leak, but it's not until we turn them on that we see the leak appear. And so most of the time in March, these leaks are associated with people's outdoor irrigation systems. And that has something to do with also, I mean, with as far as just educating, right, the user with the, like you have someone install your irrigation system for you. It's just a matter, you need to winterize your irrigation system before you shut it down for the, you know, the fall and into the winter, because it'll be less of a headache and it'll help, um, uh, I guess, uh, make it, it'll help you not have a water leak or a water burst or a pipe burst, correct, in the irrigation system? Yes, that's okay. correct. And yeah, and on our website, Save Water Santa Fe, we do have a lot of um, tips on weatherization. And then if you do suspect that um, you have an irrigation leak, give us a call and we can help you kind of track that down and figure it out looking at the Ion Water app together. Awesome. That's awesome. So great. So we're looking at uh, March, fix a leak week, March 15th through the 21st. Go on, you know, even if you don't have like, a, you know, uh, just go onto the website, right? And the water, and it's uh, savewatersantafe.com, correct? Correct. Savewatersantafe.com. Go check it out and, and kind of assess, ask yourself some questions as you're looking through the material there. There's a lot of helpful uh, information and things you may not know, you know, uh, that, that the Water Conservation Office offers. So uh, now's a good time to assess that. So next... Christine, was that it? Is that all? Can, I was just going to ask anything else about Fix a Leak Week? Um, no, I mean, you know, our focus this year is we're really looking at the outdoor sector. You know, we know we're going to have um, like less water moving forward to apply to our outdoor landscapes. And so we have a lot of things that are coming together right now related to leaks and related to trees and related to bees and, you know, lots of things. Um, outdoor. So all of these things are tied together and, um, you know, leaks is just one piece of them, but we're going to be doing a lot of work on addressing leaks and, and really helping people with the resources that's required to, to fix them. You know, we did get some feedback that sometimes people, it's less expensive for people to pay the bill than it is to hire a plumber, to find the leak, to pay for all of the repairs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's a, it's a, there's a big process, you know, you also have to apply for a leak adjustment credit with our customer billing department. And so if we can just encourage people to catch those leaks within 24 hours on their property, it really saves everyone um, a lot of water, most importantly, and a lot of time and money. And so it's, it's beyond just like, you know, sign up for iron water and, you know, watch it carefully. It's, you know, once you get that information, let us help you address the issue. That's awesome. That's awesome. You had mentioned in your, uh, it, just in your answer that you were giving us just now, bees. Now I know we've gotten a couple of, uh, we've had some press in there about, uh, about bees and it's Bee City USA. Can you talk a little bit of, just a little bit about that? On what yes, it is? I'm, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm so happy. I mean, it's so funny that bees would cause such a um, so much excitement, you know, and, and we're really fortunate that all of this came our way, but um, Council Romero Worth was um, approached by some, um, you know, different groups in the community who were really interested in integrating, you know, some bees, um, I guess, issues into some of the things that we were looking at. And so um, under her direction, you know, we formed a group and water conservation played a role in that and the parks department and sustainability. And, um, you know, we all tried to figure out how we can not only look at native bee pollinator habitats, but also, you know, how can we encourage our residents to just really start thinking more closely about what they're putting in the ground? 
Um, okay. So we want to plant things that are native, that require less water, but that also may double as pollinator habitats. And so, oh, okay. you know, working with the Tree Smart um, Santa Fe program initiative that just came out a couple of weeks ago, um, that is tied directly to this bees initiative because we just have all of these groups interested in doing all of these things right. And so. I'm really excited. We have over 22 partners and um, we have the Randall uh, Davy Audubon Center helping yeah. us, uh, you know, form a committee and create these, uh, you know, community events. And so it's, it's really about, it's funny that bees kind of brought all these organizations together to talk about what we can do together um, because, you know, we're all looking at multiple issues together. So I, I'm really excited about the collaboration and the opportunity to work with this group. And um, that resolution was at Quality of Life last night and it passed on consent. And so I think now it goes uh, to finance and the governing body in the next coming weeks. And so I'm really wow. excited. It's a lot of momentum already and it's only hit its first, its first stop. So really yeah. excited about it. No, that's great. That's great. Anytime we can do stuff to help the bees out, right? Well, honestly, I'm like, I need to learn so much more about bees, but on this, this committee that I'm working on, we have those experts. We have, you know, the yeah. Xerxes Society and the Botanical Gardens and the Randall Davy Audubon Center. I mean, those are the experts, but we can integrate the message of water conservation into any of those things. And so now we're not only just talking about water conservation or bees separate or trees separate or now we're talking about all of it in one, you know, in, in one with a great audience of a lot of different stakeholders. And so, you know, I think I'm really excited about the opportunity to work on things like that moving forward. We have to do that, work on these collectively. Well, if you really want to know about bees, you can watch the bee movie that Jerry Seinfeld's in, right? That <laughs> so right. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, it lightly touches, you know, on, on, on their everyday life with, the, you know, a Seinfeld twist to it, but that's how I learned a lot about bees. So anyway, I love it. <laughs> yeah, my my awesome. son watched it so much when he was a little kid. So, you know, it's, it's a fun movie. Well, mm -hmm. well, Christine, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate the time. I know you're very busy, but I just appreciate you coming on and, and telling us uh, about Fix Leak Week and also about Bee City USA that that's going through right now. Um, thank you again. And, and please come back. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it's, it's great to have the opportunity to talk about all these things. So thank you. Yes, thanks. And thank you folks for watching. Have a safe week. Have a great week. Adios.